Hey guys, welcome back. This time we're going to be actually uh, screen recording my computer. I'm going to be talking about and sort of reviewing LumaZone, which is a new plugin for Photoshop. And it's a different way to create and select luminosity mask within Photoshop. Um, as you can get more information from NinoBatista.com, go under uh, Photoshop plugins, and you can actually see two of his plugins available now. This one I'm talking about is LumaZone. Um, and then it gives you all the information, what it does. Um, he also has a video of how he uses it, um, how you can use it for saturation masking as well, not just luminosity values. And explaining behind saturation mask if you're not sure what the, how to use that or how it works. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Photoshop. I have it installed. And the first image I'm going to show you on this card that's nearly done. How I use Luminosity Mask and this plugin is for color grading. Um, you could use it for color grading, like I said before, and the examples on his website. You can use it for saturation mask. Also, another way you can do it is a lot of landscape photographers use it for multiple exposures. Um, the sky is really bright, and they're going to have a shot for the sky, exposed for the sky. We have another shot exposed for the landscape, uh, the mountains, the hills, whatever. Um, and they're going to use lumin luminosity masks, sorry, I can talk, to blend them together uh, and selecting those values that they want to select from one image and bring it in. Um, there's some videos out there. I'll also link it in the description of the full review of this plugin. So you can check it out if you're interested in that. But like I said, for me, I use it for color grading currently. Uh, so I'll show you kind of what I do. I'm going to open up LumaZone. And I'm going to start off with an adjustment layer. So I'll go ahead and select uh, Hue and Saturation. Go ahead and Colorize. Select Blues. I want to add a little bit of blue to the um, shadows. Bring up the Saturation. And then I'm going to select the Dark End. Of this histogram here. So this is selecting what I'm going to actually affect in the image. It's creating a mask here. I can click here to switch to see it. Everything is white is what's going to show through with that adjustment layer. Everything's black is going to be hidden if you're not familiar with mask. That's pretty much the concept behind that. Um, so I can select multiple values, deselect them, and that's one of the things I like about this. Instead of having an action that creates these multiple channels, um, you can select multiple channels and merge them together, but this is just a little bit dynamic and real view of what I'm working with. And it's not creating a whole bunch of extra stuff. It's only affecting that one layer that I'm on. Uh, I can also switch between RGB mode and saturation mode if you wanted to affect it differently. I can go back and forth. You can adjust your con contrast. Um, and then if you have the dark ends, the lower ends selected and you want to switch, you can. And it does it. Sorry, I select refresh right here, inverse. The Sorry. Well, I'm going to inverse it back to the way I want. Um, and then I'm just going to adjust it. If I wanted to do another one. And let's say I want to bring in some yellows for the highlights. So, so far this is what I'm going to be affecting. All right, and I'm going to change the blend mode. And then reduce the opacity to my liking. And this is pretty much essentially how I color grade my images. Um, don't necessarily have to do it this way. There's a lot of other stuff you can do with LumaZone. I just wanted to show you really fast how I use it, what I like about it. And let me kind of talk a few points that I think could be improved. Um, instead of doing adjustment masks, sometimes what I like to do is a new layer. And I just drop the color on it. And then if I go here to LumaZone, the layer I've selected is just a solid layer. 
there's no variation so there's nothing to grab for the luminosity mask um, so what I have to do then is select the layer that I want to grab the information from deselect these it still has information from the last time which in this case it's a little bit of an issue but I'll show you in a second what I mean by the butt part um, so here I have the dark selected. Let me go ahead and select one more. Even though this is yellow, then I can drag it up and replace that mask. So now it affects where I want it to. So if you're not doing an adjustment layer, um, this is how you would have to do it. You have to select the target layer you want and then drag the mask over. I would like to have an option here of default to the layer you have selected for adjustment layers. It's already defaulted, but in, if you start a new layer, you want to be able to select a different layer. I would not do this. I'm just showing this example so you can see how it affects the image. And a few minutes ago when I said it keeps the values, it keeps the value whatever mass you had um, from it. So if I wanted to go back, it is active and constantly changing. I just select a few more values and you can see the the yellow highlight is growing and we can I'll push it back up. So let's go select the darks. So it's constantly active and changing. You can go back and readjust as needed. If you do a few more layer adjustments and you go back, you know what? I want to go back and change this. I want to do a few more points. You can. That's one of the things I do like about the plugin. Um, another thing I like about the plugin, it is only affecting the layers I have it on. It's not creating multiple different channel masks in the background, which can increase your file size. Um, there's a lot of different actions out there that can set this up, or there's also instructions on how you can set up luminosity mask actions. I actually have one, that's what I was using before. But what I didn't like is this process. If I go to channels, it has 12 new um, luminosity masks added to there and increasing the file size when only I probably need these two. And that's how I would create my um, adjustment before. So what I like about the plugin, it doesn't actually create all this extra file um, layers in the background. Um, and then it's a little bit harder to see what exactly you have to go channel by channel and I like the other way, you can see the graph, you can see the histogram, what you're seeing, uh, what you're selecting, and you can select the different points. Yes, you can set up these multiple layers and just delete the ones you don't, you're not going to use, but it's just extra work. So this is a car shot, I'll show you the same example on portraits, select this layer, if I'm going to do a new layer, I'll go back to the actual working layer, go to the plugin, say I want to adjust the darks, and that's good, so I'll just drag that up, select that layer. Let's do something crazy again just so you can see. There you go. Um, or you can do adjustment layer. Colorize. Let's do some of the brights. You want to check the mask, that's what's all being affected. The white is what shows up 100%, and as you go to black, that's hidden. So grays, depending on the value of the gray, shows that percentage through. So 
So there you go, you can get a different look by color grading your images with luminosity mask. And this is what I mostly use it for. Um, I think that's pretty much it. One of the other things that I wouldn't mind them improving besides making an option of selecting your target layer is maybe a few more points. As you saw in my action, I had 12 uh, new channel mask for luminosity mask created. Um, some of them up out there can do little as four, uh, depending on what you're using it and how you're using it. And then some of them, I know, go up to 18. Uh, so I wouldn't mind having an option of selecting how many points, um, luminosity points and values that you could have. Another option would be to possibly make it a slider. So you can select this point and kind of gradually feather it into the other ranges instead of just having those hard points. Um, I guess another thing I wouldn't mind would be to feather that mask, but once you create the mask, you can feather it yourself. So let's say I want to add the purples to the shadows. And you just go to the properties and feather it. And if you want to see what that looks like. So the more feather. But I guess having an option to kind of blend it between different points would be nice. Um, other than that. Other than that, I think that's really the only improvements I would ask for. Um, other than that, I think that's the only improvements I would ask for. Um, I've been using this before it came out. I was one of the beta testers. Um, I was helping them out, test out any bugs or, or giving any suggestions I saw at that time. And the more I used it, the more suggestions I've had. But so far, those are the only ones I have at this moment. Um, Okay, what else was I going to say? I'm really excited how far this has come along. It's really been a huge change since the beta version I first tested out. It's I've changed my workflow from those actions to using these uh, two panels before. I never really used any panels. I just used um, actions I created um, and adjustment layers and did everything by hand. Um, really, these panels don't change anything in your image without you controlling it itself. It's just making it easier to select luminosity mask. And the other one is frequency separation it gives you a little bit more control on how you get that um, end result instead of having an action doing it. Since every image is a little bit different, you can change it up. Um, and I'll do another review for this one soon. But I'm really excited about this plugin. I can't wait to see the next version. Um, hopefully some of my suggestions make it through. Um, see you then. Or see you at the next time. Let me know what you thought about this plugin. Let me know if you picked it up. Um, let me know what I could do. What else you would like to let me know what else you would like to see. Um, I have a few more other reviews coming up, and then I'll be getting into some other types of videos as well. Um, thank you, and if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, please. Later.